The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse. With your host, John Logan. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. It's Wednesday morning in the USA. It's Wednesday night here in Asia. And look forward to talking to Tom Brown on the radio today. That's always the treat of the week. And Al is not willing to show my video today. He said I was very ugly today, so we're going to pass on showing the video right now. What we are showing is the S&Ps, and that's a heck of a bounce here, folks, in case you haven't been paying attention here, but I know you have. 1933, former unfair lows, current unfair highs, 1937. We knew about that yesterday, came and hit it, a little bit of noise above. And we had been looking at the Brett statistics on a long-term basis saying, you know what, let's, you know, we're going to have huge rallies in down markets, just as we did in 2008. We've obviously had a heck of a bounce here. So we came off about 10%, almost to the tick, from 2015 down into 1815. And we have henceforth rallied about 6%, maybe a little bit more. That's a heck of a bounce, uh, especially in like four days as it did yesterday. But in my opinion, as always, our motto is lose a little, lose a little, lose a little, make a lot. So that means picking battles, keeping the stops in force, and waiting for a decent risk-reward scenario to actually unfold. So now I think we've got well, – yesterday we talked about there wasn't any leverage here. There wasn't anything to kind of lean on. We were kind of – in 1909, 1912, and we drifted up into some areas of significance. And I'll be doing the, the free video today is actually on the S&Ps, which will be on the uh, TFNN network. So uh, if you uh, come in late today, you're more than welcome to watch that. It'll be somewhat of a replay of what I'm getting the concept across here. The cool thing is, is on the 240-minute, we've got a 1932-33 rounded off here. So we've got We've got uh, two different time frames, two similar inflection points in a very similar area. So 33 to 37 is going to be, in my opinion, with stops above, a decent area to look at the markets from the short side based on a couple of things that we're looking at and based on a heck of a bounce coming back into, and if you remember, you know, we were looking at 33 as a target at one point as we came down and kind of, you know, bounced on it and then closed below former support, now resistance, closed below, come back and retest and off to the races. So these numbers and these areas now, new profile highs, former profile lows, are going to be something that you, you just kind of lick your lips when we get back into those areas. And this is something that, you know, you as a trader, you know, we had a big sell-off. I hope you guys did well. We've had a bounce. I wasn't necessarily participating in that on a long-term basis. I was kind of uh, happy with what we had been noticing down here. Uh, but, again, you've got a chance to possibly get back in the game on the short side. And I think that, you know, again, this is me thinking, but uh, based on some of the action that we've seen and based on some of those market risk statistics being, still being relatively negative on a long-term basis, we could start seeing some drifting down of this, but you know, again, you've got uh, some babysitters sitting up there in uh, Washington, New York, Dallas. All those, you know, some of those Fed offices, <laughs> and they're ready to pull the trigger at the hint of stock market issues. So, let's take a look at something that I've been looking at here as the dollar kind of migrates back up into. Former fair auction, new fair auction, a little bit lower. Uh, new targets on the dollar on the upside, in my opinion. We may see them today. We may see them tomorrow around 86 even, and then a little bit higher, 86.15, I think. So still kind of bullish on the dollar. We're back into a complete middle of the fair auction, but we're above that previous inflection point, which was in force for a while. So uh, those are kind of the target-rich environments, 86 and 86.15 on the upside. 
And uh, now you can either use for stop-oriented traits 85-40 or long-term basis, you got uh, 84-69 rounded off below on the dollar. Now, speaking of the dollar, and taking a look a little farther down in the stack here, we're going to try to go to gold. And, <clears throat> again, a lot of people are talking about gold um, going down and I'm a big fan now of this going up. And, and once we broke stride above 1227, if you've been watching the show, we've, we've had a chance to really kind of leverage that and use some other profiles to go even higher. Um, the dollar's rallying, gold's kind of, I mean, this is really interesting to me because, you know, dollar rallies, gold usually in the past, whatever, we'll see how many, you know, eh, around 13, 13 and a half. 1300 13 and a half you know dollar has been predicating some of the moves in gold but right now it's gold's kind of fighting that recent just tick up in the dollar so uh we may move a little higher in the dollar so you know this may tick down in sympathy with that but uh 1241 is going to be where support is on it now and stops could be oriented directly below there if you're going to try to play this long game and continuation trend higher Okay, so silver, uh, it's just, you know, it's just not acting right, in my opinion. And we've just been, lit this is the mode, this blue line, this is just odd, actually. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost weird that silver's just been sitting around the mode of the, PO, of the, uh, of the profile. Now, the longer this goes into this phase, in my opinion, the more violent the breakout's going to be. And again, those numbers, just to reiterate, 1772.5 and, and then down below 1670, 1675.5. Uh, not doing anything until we have closes outside this profile. It's just kind of a herky jerky, impossible to trade scenario at this stage. But, um, you know, when, when something's doing that, and I'm going to pull this up again, I'm a huge fan of of doing an option strategy around this. So, you know, sometimes these metals, they always seem to kind of make a herky-jerky move the wrong way before they move the right way. That could happen with silver. It might not be a bad idea to take a look at this from a strangle-type scenario. So you're, you know, maybe buying the 18 calls and buying the 1650 puts or, you know, some form or fashion of that and trying to, you know, just wait this contraction and volatility situation out so uh you know you want to be a little bit more close to the money obviously you can get a little closer to the money but you know the the boring trade and i'm kind of a big fan of boring at this stage of my life um i'd probably buy the strangle you could obviously look into like the thinker swim statistics try to figure out what optimally would be the best strategy i think they got some great tools on there um and uh you know kind of <clears throat> match your appetite for risk and your uh, appetite for glory, I guess. So silver is, again, I think uh, that would be something to pay attention to. We're going to bring Eric and Courtney on. We're going to try. Uh, I think we're going to succeed today. We had a couple of miscommunications on that the other day, and we're going to kind of quiz him, and I love doing that. You know, Eric's the kind of guy I always feel better after I speak to him. I don't know, he's got a gift for, for making people feel comfortable and also giving them some great knowledge. Uh, let's take a look at the NASDAQ. He's going to be on next segment. Here's the situation on the NASDAQ. Um, we talked about 3902 yesterday. <clears throat> we talked about putting stops above. Now, that's just another one of those situations where we try to pick our battles at high probability areas. If, if they don't work out, them's the breaks. So here we are. Here we go. We're kind of floating around up here now. The S&P is obviously at a little bit better inflection point situation. We've got a new profile in the short term on 240. So targets down below if you're going to play that S&P NASDAQ slide game. 3887 sitting down below. That's, Jesus, ooh, that's, that's, a, that's a big move down. That's a huge, huge profile width. Wow. So, and guess what? That is actually predicting some high volatility. So we may see... We may see a big move down today um, and, a, and an exploration of that profile. Uh, something else I want to take a look at before we go to first break and talk to Eric. 
DAX, you know, still, you know, the heavy hand of the DAX is just not, no profiles appearing, no profiles trying to appear. Again, I wouldn't try to put this in my long portfolio. Uh, I just kind of wait this out, see if we can get another profile appearing and use some of the inflection points on the shorter term. So that's my take on the DAX. It's just never good. <laughs> in fact, here's the uh, British panel. Look, you know, the Bank of uh, England came out and said, you know, they said what they're going to have to say to keep the pound from going up. They want it to go down. Here's the situation on the pound we talked about. Again, not getting excited for going long the pound. Got a great leverage point, 165.25 up there. And then we've just been kind of using profiles to regulate this thing down into the dirt. This is the daily. Targets down below, I'm sure they'll be met. 159.81. We've reached a low today already of 160.11. So got a little bit of ways to go. Right in the middle of fair auction right now. Rome wasn't built in a day, so you know these don't have to happen immediately. But I feel like we're going to have breakout potential again below 159.81. And I'm a seller of the pound, and I'm not changing my tune on that anytime soon. Big fan of shorting this one too. The Australian dollar, uh, a lot of, a lot of things in in the favor here of this continuing to go down. And I love this action right here. This is the daily on the Aussie. I love the fact that I mean, people can look at this as a basing action possibly to spike up. I'm looking at it as gathering itself, gathering momentum, almost like getting spring loaded to, to you know, make new lows again. And those. Targets down below on the Australian dollar, 86.92, and breakouts below, closes below. I'm going to be looking that at that area to look at, at at leveraging it against that on the short side. So above the inflection point to pay attention to, 88.07 rounded off. So any of those areas, you, you know, that's where you pick your battles. Um, not a lot of conflicting information on that scene, so I'm looking at that as a very true short opportunity. Yeah, I got to pull this back up. This, you know, this this ruble. Uh, I've been on the phone with some folks in Moscow today again, and uh, Hong Kong. I mean, there's there's some clamoring to try to get rid of rubles. That's actually getting to the point of extraordinarily overt, um, to the point where we're gonna, you know, see some people going outside of normal envelopes to do some currency conversions, and I don't think there's any way to stop this. So. Here's the situation on the ruble. If you've never traded it, maybe you ought to take a look at it. Unfair highs, 41.14. Looks like we're compressing against that, ready to pop, as if we're on the launching pad again on the ruble. Pay attention to this one. We'll be right back, folks. Eric Courtney's joining us. I think you'll enjoy this. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technamental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you are under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. I'm showing the tenure right now if you're looking at uh, Tiger TV. And... Do we have Eric Courtney on the phone? I think so. Do you hear me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had a we had a mountain of uh, technical difficulties yesterday, and I apologize for that. How are you uh, today, the Eric? Butter, the butterflies in Africa flying around. That's what happens <laughs> in the. Uh, <laughs> um, so, how, uh, what do you so, think, John? You think you think we're going to be all right here? <laughs> yeah, you know what? That, that's kind of my question for you. Um, I was I was going to ask you, is like, since you're up on Wall Street, folks, Eric's I consider Eric the mayor of Wall Street. He's he's a very well respected individual up there, and and, and uh, I just I love going up there to see him. Uh, we go to some pretty cool places when I'm up there, um, and I was hoping you know that you might have a temperature of uh, what some folks are talking about. Is this a real bounce back into the highs, or is this you know, we had the 10% correction, and this is kind of the retracement back to where we kind of broke off. Uh, what's, uh, what's, what's your thoughts there? The, the, it's quarterly earnings, and right. quarterly earnings are already always a big volatile type of – tend to be on the upside of the market. Uh, Boeing just came out with good numbers. You know, whatever they can pick point, pinpoint to, you know – 
uh, for earnings they will follow. Yesterday was Apple. You know, if we don't start buying Coca-Cola and Big Macs, this country's going down the toilet if you look at those earnings. But the thing <laughs> is, it's an exciting, you know, the, 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 not the analysts. The analysts on around, but the hedge funds, the portfolio managers, you know how they get paid. They get paid on performance. If they're back to flat and zero, what do you think they're going to do? They're not going to be buying, uh, you know, CDs. They're going to be in there looking to try to trade, try to make some money, try to put some money to use. I remember when they had these earnings reports, you know, and uh, before and after how to trade an earnings report. But mm -hmm. on balance, I think it's pretty much earnings hype market. I call a QE worldwide economy. We're in a quantitative easing economy. There's no other word for it. Thanks, thanks uh, for leaving off the number. Thanks for leaving off the number at huh? the end of QE. Uh, thanks for leaving off the number at the end of QE. I'm tired of them naming naming these things. Yeah. Three, four, two, whatever. Uh, this, I know. Uh, it's, it's, they're going to step on the gas pedal no matter it, what. When anyway. Yeah, I mean, Keynes uh, would, would roll over in the grave. He'd say, my God, you know, I mean, there's been so many zombie economics. Where, you know, we're, we're no longer in uh, austerity, please. Austerity, the, the Germany, they're looking at the, 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 their Austerity is not working. The equilibrium didn't work. Trickle-down didn't work. You know, yep. all of the other fancy economic, political economic situations have not worked. The bottom line is you've got to look at the world realistically and things have changed. Now, I think what you see and you saw in November, uh, by the way, you know, what I, what I saw, the way you handled the last call on the market pullback and then things, I mean, you saved so much time. Time is the biggest enemy of every trader and every manager of portfolio, etc. You save a lot of time with the scanner and with the other. You're able to get in there and, and get an idea of what's going on. Now, I think you're seeing earnings you know, whoop de do going on right now, but the fundamentals underneath it are pretty serious. You've got deflation, you've got China not growing. You know, they say we're okay with not growing, but let me tell you, you don't hire 10 million people from the, from the country in China every year, you're out of a job. You could be running a company. I did, uh, I made uh, uh, cars, uh, not cars, but golf carts in China. And uh, the guy told me that uh, he said, uh, if I don't hire so many people a year, uh, you're not gonna. I'm not gonna be picking up the phone. You know, be like, make like nothing is amiss, comrade. We're going for a ride. So I mean, China <laughs> has got some problems. You know, Russia. I love the fact that the oil is going down. Do you know what killed communism was? The price of oil it was not Gorbachev, was not Reagan, was not any of the you know fancy conservatives going to take a you know, big bow for that price of oil bankrupted Russia. It was three dollars, four dollars a barrel. We're talking Star Wars. Gorbachev can't buy a cup of coffee. So the I bottom line that. is, they said, "That's yeah. enough." You remember that? Well, look, and I, I, then I, I, I Russia, what, right? We're, we're going we're gonna to go to break in a couple of seconds here. Can you hang around? Because I've got some questions that uh, maybe only you can answer. Let's go. Okay. okay. We'll I'll be right back, folks. Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. 
Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex box spreads. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, welcome back to the show, guys. Uh, Eric, are you still with us? Yes, still with you, John. You know, I was, I was, I was saying something about you earlier. You, you are a very knowledgeable person in general and i always learn something when i talk to you always it's always been the case and i really appreciate some of the things that you uh you got under the hood and, and can uh, share with folks i think it Hello? i think some of the time you know i i try to, uh, to bring a little bit of uh not, not comedy but lightness to it because yeah. We get so serious and we get so uh, yeah. crazy, and I think it. I think traders have to have a, uh, you know, they've got to be calm, C A L M, keep calm and carry on, and they've got to, you know, a little sense of humor goes a long way. I mean, you and I were talking about IBM before. You know, they've all, it's a it's a hundred year company now. They've had nine presidents, and the guy I liked the best was Lou Gerstner. Because he came out of Ritz Crackers, the Nabisco. He, he left Ritz uh -huh. Crackers and ended up in in, in, in uh, mainframes. And his first, I, re, I was at the thing where he did his first analyst meeting. And the analyst said, what the hell do you know, Lou, about computers? And he looked at the guy and he said, I don't know anything about computers. 
He said, I know very little. He said, the only thing I will tell you is this. You might want to keep your stamps and make a collection of them because the way business is done is going to change. There's not going to be mail. You know, and he, right. he had the right idea. He had the right, you know, I mean, IBM is, is, a, is one of the icons. I mean, I used to watch IBM for a trading, you know, that was the lead. If IBM was doing all right, the rest of the market would follow. So you yeah. got so many changes now. You've yeah, got you so many good ideas coming up. Yeah, I remember when you could trade. This was back not too long ago, like uh, mid to late 90s. You could trade the S&Ps exclusively watching IBM. I mean, just one stock. Um, you know, uh, Eric, are you still there? Is it that way? Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Am um, I on? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Um, well, we were talking about a couple other things with IBM. I mean, you're talking about the good old dates. What, what do you think's in store for this thing? I mean, and what you know, did they miss? Did they kind of miss the transition, so to speak, to real high tech? And uh, what's your thoughts on that? I think IBM. You know, I, I'll be honest with you. I think IBM never left the white collar, button down shirt and tie and shifted over to the turtlenecks. I think that that has been their basic problem. They've only had nine presidents. Many of them came out of the Watson fold, uh, even including the new one. And they still have a sort of, a, you know, elitist attitude. They've made so many big mistakes. It is a phenomenal company. It's a great company, but it is not the Apple, Facebook, Google, uh, you know, type of environment. Uh, I read a great book recently about a, a girl who, who joins, it's called The Circle. It's a silly little book, but it tells you what, what you don't work at Google or Apple uh, unless you live it. You have to actually live it. You don't work right. there. Nine to five right. is not even known. You have to be there on weekends. They have things going on. I mean, IBM doesn't. IBM is still, uh, you put the shirt and tie on and you get on the train from, uh, you know, dairy and go to work. Now, I think that they have not done that, but they have tremendous ideas of getting rid of some of the things. I love this shrinkage attitude. Coca-Cola is going to shrink. You know, the guy who started shrinking things because he had to over at the bank there at Morgan Bank, at, the, at, at the Morgan Stanley, He's shrunk the bank, and he's looking like a hero. I think everybody all of a sudden, you know, executives are human beings too, right? They look at, well, yep. what's working today? Well, maybe what we'll do, let's shrink the company this year. I don't know. That's a good idea. Get everybody busy working on that. I mean, <laughs> you, business is, is, is really comedy at its best. But I think that you do have certain things and ideas that we have to really focus on now with regard to the technology side. There's some big problems there, and, and uh, it, it's going to be interesting. We, will, we lead every day, every day, every day. Apple, Apple, iPod, iPod. Uh, I mean, it's, it, it, it makes me crazy. Look at TechMirror. You mentioned that stock a while ago, TKMR on Ebola. We talked about that two months ago. They finally yeah, are coming me, across. It's a big deal. Yeah, let me pull that up while you're talking. Go ahead. This is a big deal. This, this uh, Johnson and Johnson has a new company out there now today. Trying, I mean, we're not talking four or five thousand people. We're talking fifty, sixty, hundred thousand people. Do you know it's so bad in Africa that China, that spent the entire decade while we were fighting Iraq and Iran and Afghanistan and I don't know who in Pakistan or whatever else, China was very slowly and quietly over in Africa buying the country. All right. You know what? You, you know what? Money. Let me yeah. let me let me make a let me make a footnote to what you just said. Eric is totally spot on when he says that. I went to was it Shanghai? It was either Shanghai or Beijing last year. I went to a couple of Chinese cities, but I forgot where I was watching TV. You know, you watch TV in China, Eric, and you get you know in the hotel you get sixty channels and you get CCTV on you know yeah. forty different levels. Um, but every show that you watch is either educational, historical, or some kind of like quality entertainment. I'm talking, you know, like uh, gymnastics or just arts crazy and good, whatever. crazy, yeah. yeah, crazy good arts and music and stuff like that. But one of the shows, you know, I was, I was, I kept flipping through, and I was like, hey, these people digging holes and blah blah. blah. <laughs> and three of the stations that they had were completely devoted 
to building out Africa, the Chinese oh. building out Africa. So, so I, I watch these shows, and then you know you you don't hear that too heavy in the states, but man, I'm telling you, they are they are it's it's unbelievable what they're doing there. And before you know it, I mean, Africa is going to be kind of like absorbed. They go there, they go there on <clears throat> supposedly, you know, philanthropic type moves. They go in there, they they take the town, they build the fifty million dollar bridge that they've always needed. Right. They do this, they, they lend they the money, the, they lend the money. Yep, they build the the stable electric plant. They do that, they do this, I, and then they get, you know, like the po- political. It's kind of like I, what you had to do here, to be honest with you, at some at one point. But, um, you know, they they know what they're doing. They go in there and usually do it better than most folks there. They're building some resentment. Uh, foreign countries, the Europe, they came in here. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, We're spending but, uh, billions of dollars bombing $200 huts in Iraq while they're over yeah. there buying Angola. Now, the, the papers today said they're a little concerned about this Ebola. I mean, you know, the Ebola thing is, uh, you know, we're, 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 Americans are so numb that we hear so much news we're, you know, we're, 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 we're just crazed with information. But bottom line, this Ebola thing is not a, is, is a serious situation. And uh, from a trading point of view, yes, there are a number of ideas there. I think there's some very good ideas. Other good ideas today, Boeing, I think, and in, in, in that whole arena is, is looking good. I remember a few years, well, it wasn't too long ago, Boeing was looking for the, uh, the, the, the little rabbit in the battery to keep the planes in the air. Uh, but, but but now not you know Boeing has has come around beautifully. I I think you know you you you've got to take a look at some of these things in terms of the basic stocks that that uh, you know I'm not saying we go long anything here. I think you're right in terms of what's happening underlying. I think the earnings is the is the show, but underlying uh, there are no tickets really being sold. Okay, it's right, a nice yeah. show right. Now, but there's no real tickets being sold for the future, because right, right. now we've, we're seeing a lot of deterioration. Look how long we've been up. Look how strong we are. Interest rates, deflation, currency wars. We're going to have currency wars again. Everybody's trying to pass their deflation on to somebody else. I read an article about algorithmic trading. You know, pair trading and algorithms. And with, with you, you know, your your specialty. Right. right. It's it's going to explode. Because everybody's trying to figure how the hell am I going to, you know, even that Bitcoin thing you did the other day was interesting because of the fact that <laughs> even though that's new and it's, it's, to me it's a little crazy because I'm an old man. But obviously <laughs> there's going to be trading going on in Bitcoins. Uh, well, I, I spoke to somebody yesterday. I had dinner with last night. He was talking. We were talking about Bitcoins. Well, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't trade Bitcoins without BitMEX. That's, that's, the, that's the, you know, the hand-in-hand pair there because... How can you sleep at night knowing that the thing can bounce around and, uh, you know, your investments, it's, it's, it's like uh, the old Internet days, like times 100. So when you have BitMEX and you're able to hedge that scenario, you really, I mean, you know, you, you, can, you can do well with Bitcoins using BitMEX as a tandem instrument or an in-tandem yeah. instrument. Eric, I, I got to, you know, you got to, I got to tell these people this. When you go to Eric's house, you see these books on the shelf that, it's like war and peace, like a thousand of them, and uh, they're on you know esoteric things about the uh, German Ministry of Finance and what the outlook is for the next ten years and things like that. He's he is probably the most well-read individual that I've ever come across in my life, um, and he always jokes about you know he reads reads the books that nobody else reads. What is your thoughts? I'm gonna throw you a curveball right now, if that's okay. All right. All right. What what are your thoughts about? And we can get into this. We got about four four and a half minutes left. And then we got another five minutes after that. What are your thoughts about? You know, growth is good. It's like greed is good. Growth is good for economies. At some point, we're going to have nine billion people on the planet. Technology shaves jobs off in general. What are your thoughts about how is that going to unfold? Because you know, populations increase. Technology kind of, you know. Uh, kind of turns things into, if well, efficiency. I, I know this because I talk to my guys on the on the farm scene all the time. You know, they, you know, the technology in farming is, you know, continuing to shave jobs out of that sector. To, you know, forty eight percent of the United States 
at the turn of the century was involved in farming. Do you know what the number is now? You know what percentage of the U.S. population is involved in farming? Three, three, four, something like Less that. Less than two. Four? Less than two. Less than two. I was say three, yeah. 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 Well, uh, my so thoughts what you, about what, growth, yeah. yeah. My thoughts about growth is that it is here to stay. You're never going to stop it. We have got the turtleneck environment, as I said about the IBM. You've got young people. They are not happy right now. They are concerned about the future, etc. But you have tremendous, tremendous talent across the board in all okay. of I mean, I, I wish I could grab the Eastern European brain that is out there hacking into bank accounts and use that for the growth you know side. You, you know, know what? I've got an inter- here's interesting, inter- interesting story on that. Just a footnote to what you said. We just hired a programmer yeah. out of Lithuania. He is a rock star full blown he's incredibly oh, no. talented yeah and we're getting him at a great deal and and he <clears throat> speaks english perfect which is great for me and uh right out of that eastern you know block type situation the the belaruses the you know the the lithuanians which is a lot more advanced than belarus but yeah go ahead continue continue i'm just you know. well what's the the main problem we have i think is that human beings are human beings you've got in certain countries not just this country Tremendous inequality. Uh, now, when I inequality is, we went over that little thing I did about capitalism in the 21st century. The one percent wealthy, the middle class shrinking from 40 percent of the, let's say in this country, 70, 80 trillion, down to 25 percent of it, and the difference between that, what they had and what they are going to have is going upstairs to the Bloomberg's, to the wealthy people. Now, here's the thing: growth is here to stay. You cannot stop it, and you don't want to stop it. You've got to enjoy it. You've got to work with it. You've got to think about it. You've got to listen to guys like you and know how to trade, how to find the companies, see the scanner. You give a great benefit, whether you know it or not, in reducing the time it takes. It used to take forever to go figure out what the hell is moving in the markets. You've got that down now to the point where you can reduce the time. But I expect... With growth, one other important factor that I think I'm very strong about is that ownership has to come back to the working class of America. They've got to participate in ownership. I'm not talking 401k, buy a few shares for your retirement. I'm talking about if we want to see inequality understood and inequality softened or at least inequality not being something that's going to become a sociological problem, which it could very well be, we have to start saying, here's a share of the company. Here's a piece of what we're doing. Here's, you know, you're a part owner. You're a part owner. Starbucks is, you know, Home Depot was the best at that. you got a guy down in the island, Home Depot, selling paint. You know what? He's a millionaire because of the Home Depot stock he bought. That's how well right. that company did with Marcus and uh, the other guy that, that, that started. It's not doing as well now, but they really, you have to have growth and all of these new things coming at us, but company and management has to start sharing with the working class and the working people uh, and I, even, even the quant working class. I mean, not everybody's digging a ditch anymore. Everybody's, you know, pretty smart. But you got to give them a little bit of the game. you got to give them some skin of the game. And that way, you'll be able to soften the cynic quality. And I think so growth stays. You know what? We're, you know... We got to go to break now. I really appreciate you coming on today. I think everybody enjoyed hearing what you have to say. Thank you, uh, John. Let's do it again. Let's do it again soon. And whenever you say, good luck. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thanks, there. Okay. Thank you. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely 
completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long Long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Masters Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery in pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, Unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Catch Steve Rhodes as he teaches techniques on technical analysis using pattern recognition, celestial charting, Fibonacci, and other tools. The Trader's Edge, next on TFNN. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Uh, right now, I'm showing some conditional situations here. These are some... Stocks that are trading below profiles on the S&P 500, uh, CMG. Oops, let's just uh, verify these. Pretty sure it's right. Coca-Cola, Lockheed Martin, IBM, obviously. A couple of the usual suspects here, Gap, Intel. These are things, if you think the market's going to come down. Yes, sorry about that. If you think the market's going to come down, and uh, I'm looking at the S&Ps, looking at some inflection points that I think the market's going to come down. I think you can put stops oriented around those. You want to find candidates that are hopefully going to be able to already show their hand is something. We talk about that all the time. So let's look at uh, a couple of things here. Let's look at CMG. That was on the, uh, the old radar screen there. Oof. Ouch. Yeah. Classic. Close below, retest, boom. All right, well, Chipotle, 
from a relative strength standpoint, wasn't my favorite pick. But again, uh, we got to look at the technicals. And the good news is, is those borders really don't allow you on a long term basis to really start nibbling on the long side. I mean, you know, you this is something, you know, just case in point. We, you know, we we have to take a look at this and look at it trying to eliminate one side of the marketplace i know we had some volatility yesterday morning um but uh you know as as we see these profiles being as a regulator of these trades going down or going up we've got to pay attention to them and what it does for me is eliminates one side of the marketplace just just kind of wrap up really quick here we got about two minutes left uh gold this is the situation on gold New unfair highs, 1241. This is kind of what – I don't want to give back too much ground here in gold. I want gold to go up. I like gold going up. I like the dollar going up a little bit farther too. But as we you know, look at that relationship, I think gold from a relative strength standpoint is hanging in there. We talked about 27, that retest, getting on the, on the bus again to go north. I don't want to put my stops below 27. I want to kind of right now put them below 41 based on my appetite for risk and just kind of be able to get back in that game above there or possibly be able to pull, pick a battle at 27, that all-important number, and maybe even, you know, way down here around 12 18. And why am I, you know, kind of scaling down here? I think gold is probably going to move higher. Gold has a tendency to fake people out. It has a tendency to kind of move in the wrong direction before it moves in the right direction. And you've got a couple of places here where you can pick your battles and get stopped out. But that move up could be tremendous from a relative scale at 27 or 18 or even 41. So this is kind of that same concept, lose a little, lose a little, make a lot. And uh, it's no big deal to take stop outs. Our automated systems promise you. The good ones only win 40% of the time. So, you know, we take stops, the systems take stops without any feelings involved, and it's a good thing. So, you know, that's kind of the MO for what I'm talking about with gold. So, again, before we head off, let's just take one more look at the S&Ps. I know everybody's looking at those. We can get it up before the last 10 seconds here. These are the numbers I'm looking at. That DMZ range between 33 and 37, that general neighborhood, with stops above. Thanks, guys. Eric Courtney, thank you for coming on today. You're awesome. Stay tuned for Steve Rhodes. You will enjoy it. We'll be back in the park, guys. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.